This is finally our review of the Dreamy LTNS Ultra. It is without a doubt one of the best and highest spec robot vacuum and mop combos on the market, but we're going to be putting it through all of our standard tests to see how well it actually stacks up. The LTNS Ultra is currently one of very few truly hands-free robot vacuum and mop combos. To be considered hands-free, in my opinion, a robot needs to have a few things. Object avoidance. This has a camera and secondary LDS array looking for things on the floor. An Ultra Dock that can empty the dustbin and wash the mops. The LTNS Ultra Dock also has a unique detergent dispenser and also dries the mopping pads after each clean to stop them from smelling. And most importantly, a mop that lifts itself up automatically when it detects carpet so that it continues cleaning without you having to remove the mopping pads. The LTNS Ultra does all of this well. In addition to that, it has 5,300 pascals of suction, which is slightly more than the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. The mopping pads are rotational, which are a huge step up from drag around mops and do a much better job on tougher stains than most other robot mops. We gave this a real thorough test later on in the video. The design is refreshingly simple and clean. The dock is slightly bigger in real life than what it looks in the photos, but it blends nicely into the white walls in most homes. Inside the dock, we have two 2.75 litre water containers for the clean and dirty water, and a larger than normal 4 litre dust bag for the vacuum debris. Note, you will need to replace the dust bags, as there is no bagless option. The robot is also pretty good looking and simple. It has a single rubber roller brush, which doesn't get much hair tangled in it. Incidentally, I tried the bristle brush on the Z10 Pro, and it fits so that'll be better in certain situations like pet hair on carpet. It just has the one side brush, however that doesn't matter because it always aligns itself anti-clockwise when cleaning around the perimeter of a room. So to test how good those rotating mopping pads on the LTNS really are, we have put down some grape juice over there and we've put down some coffee to simulate some muddy boot prints and we've left them to dry overnight to let them get nice and tough to remove. Uh, so again, we've made this tougher than what we normally do because I think that the mopping is going to do quite a good job. To benchmark it, we've also included the X1 Omni by Ecovax, which is their current flagship model with a similar rotating mop to see how well this actually compares and to see whether the water dispersion and the pressure makes a big difference or not. So after one pass you can see that the L10S did a pretty good job and it's left a few spots here or there like a little bit of grape juice left over. The dried coffee is pretty much gone but it is a pretty hard test now that we've got. It's been sitting on there for over 12 hours now, well over 12 hours, probably closer to 18 hours so it's had lots of time to set. So it's quite impressive that it's done as good as it has. On the other hand the X1 has barely made a dent on it. We're going to send it out for a couple more passes to see if it can redeem itself somewhat, but so far it's a pretty clear win for the LTNS and it really does highlight how impressive that mopping is. As I'd expect from a premium LiDAR robot, it had complete coverage of the test area. It drives right into the corners, although like all circle robots, there is a small spot in the corners where it's fully relying on the side brush as the suction and roller brush is located between the wheels. It behaved perfectly around the furniture, making a point of going around the bed legs separately. So after a single pass on the vacuuming, on the hard floor you can see that there is a little bit of stuff here and there. It generally speaking is mostly from that side brush still, just pushing it out of the road of the main suction motor. Uh, but there is a little bit left, it's still pretty good. On the carpet though, however, 
uh, it did do slightly better again because that side brush is less prone to flicking things out of the way. But there are a few pieces left over. So before we let it empty itself, we're just going to have a look into that dustbin and just see how much there is before and see if it manages to empty it all. So, as you can see, it is getting pretty full already. We did tip a lot of cereal and hair on that floor. Uh, so we'll put it through and we'll see how much it manages to suck out. So it has emptied itself. Let's see how successfully it has done that. I can see already a little bit of hair stuck through the vac shoot there. But let's pull it out and have a look. So there is no cereal at all left. But there is a little bit of hair that's obviously got caught in the door. The door's obviously closed on it and kept it caught in there. I don't know if that would be a problem in real life. I kind of suspect not. Um, because generally speaking, it would be a lot more clumped up and compacted in there, so it would pull it out as one big clump. But yeah, there is a little bit left, which I'm surprised to see. We put it through an obstacle course featuring some precariously perched pens, a pair of socks, the three bears eating Easter eggs under the mini table, and past the fake dog poop. We tried it multiple times, and it was as impressive as it looks, getting incredibly close to the items, although it did occasionally knock over a pen. You can also view footage from the onboard camera through the app. I personally don't have a practical use for this, but I know some people like to use it to check in on their pets, or if you're away from home, you can remotely drive it and have a look around. So I thought I'd just quickly show you guys how you clean the base itself, because they do need cleaning from time to time, and there are a couple of things on this Dreamy that makes it pretty good in this regard. They also include this little brush here, uh, which has also a hair cutting tool. I personally think that because you can remove the base, it's probably better just to use a paper towel, but anyway, you get this. Most other robots, you can't remove this cleaning grill thing here, but on this one it comes out so it makes it way easier to clean. And there's also a secret little hidden feature where if you press the home button on the base for three seconds, it fills the base up with water. And then you can just get a wet cloth or the cleaning brush and just wash it out like that and it makes the whole thing so much easier. Then to suck the water out again, you just hold the home button again for three more seconds and voila. So overall, it is a very good robot. The navigation is good, the app is good, and the cleaning performance is very good as well. In particular, those rotational mopping pads are a huge step up from the drag around mopping systems that we're used to in the past. And the water dispersion on this robot is better than any other robot I've tested so far. I think that the minimalist design does set it apart from its nearest competitors, and I think some people will make the decision based on that because it is pretty close. Overall, the simple, clean white design fits into most homes and it kind of blends into those white walls. It also has a 4 litre dust bag, which is bigger than most other options on the market, so it will be hands-free for slightly longer. It is also the only robot with an automatic detergent dispenser, so that's great too. The fact that the base can actually wash itself as well as the robot is a pretty cool feature which I think is also unique at the moment. I'm sure we'll start to see it coming in on other models. In addition to that, it also has nice big air inlets for the auto empty function, which is a good thing as some of them do tend to get jammed up. Despite this being Dreamy's flagship and premium robot, this doesn't actually do quite as well on carpet as some of the other models. This is mainly down to the fact that it's got a fully rubber brush instead of the bristled brush. This is both a pro and a con because the rubber brush won't get as much hair tangled around it so you gain a lot of convenience. However, it won't be quite as good on carpet. It's interesting to know that the Z10 Pro brush does fit in this robot here. However, you won't then have the comb which detangles the hair while it's cleaning. There aren't many cons to this robot, but I think one of the biggest ones is that the mop, while it raises 7 mils, does still slightly drag on the carpet. So it doesn't apply any downwards pressure, so the carpet doesn't get wet and it doesn't spread much dirt on it. However, if you have light coloured carpet in particular, you may want to be mindful of this. 
There are only a few key differences between this and its competitors, so hopefully I've helped to outline what they are in this video. If you still have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. Key differences that could contribute, no, oh, what the hell? As a result, I think that, oh, what the f bristled brush. My brain just.